Hi, this is Erika Kassab from Small Robot Studio. In this volume of the brush series, we'll take a look at the painting tools in Nomad Sculpt. First, there are two ways to assign colors to a model UV maps and vertex paint. UV maps project 2D images into 3D models. In essence, we are flattening the surfaces of our model and assigning an image to those faces, like the wrapper of a Christmas chocolate. The resolution depends on the image projected, not on the model itself. Nomad works with vertex paint. Vertex paint is different. It assigns a color to each vertex. The color of each face of your model is an average of the colors assigned to the vertices that make it. Unlike UVs, the resolution depends on the amount of polygons our model has. If your painting looks pixelated with harsh borders, it's probably because you don't have enough resolution in your mesh. Try subdividing or voxeling with higher resolution. To choose a color, open the material shortcut on the side of your screen, the colored sphere. If it's not there, check the material is enabled inside the interface menu under the left shortcut section. Let's start painting with the paintbrush. Like any brush, we can reverse its action with this side button. So, instead of painting, it will erase. We can change its behavior in the stroke menu. For example, change the quality of the edge by using different falloff settings. The shape of the brush will be determined by the alpha. By default, it's set to a square. Choose no alpha for a perfect circle. Or import any image in black and white. The white will paint in full intensity. Black, no intensity, and the grays in between with transparency depending on their brightness. With tiling, we can define how many times the alpha is repeated on each stroke. Change the method from surface to screen project and the alpha will be repeated like a pattern. The repetition can be made in the X or Y axis, or we can mirror them instead. Choose no repetition in any axis and paint the alpha in only one place. The projection is defined by the camera. If the view isn't perpendicular to the surface, or the surface is rounded, the alpha will be deformed. Let's reset this brush by tapping on the tool and choosing Reset. Inside the tool settings we have the depth filtering option. Instead of painting everything it touches, it will focus on concave or convex areas. It will consider the average height in the surface under the radius of the brush and paint holes or bumps, depending if the slider is set to a positive or negative number. This is only a painting aid. It's not gonna do all the work for you. You might have noticed that with matcap shading, the colors look wrong. This is because the matcap has a base color interfering with the painted colors. Both colors are mixed, so the result is tinted and darker. To appreciate the real colors, you need to use the white matcap. But there are no lights and shadows. This is why for our matcap pack, I made a couple options designed for vertex paint. Get a free sample by using the link in the description or buy the pack with 39 matcaps in our Gumroad store for only 5 US dollars. Let's move on to another tool, Smudge. This one is simple. It works as if you push wet paint with your finger, blending colors together. To improve the performance by making faster strokes, use the Project Once setting inside the Tools menu. If you want another option to blend the applied paint, Use the Smooth tool with the intensity set to zero, so the shape of the geometry isn't changed. Finally, let's look at the painting menu. Use the shortcut on the side or the square brush icon on the top. By enabling this first option, we can paint and sculpt using any tool. The next option, Paint Intensity, controls how transparent the color will be when applied. It's not the same to the intensity slider, which controls the amount of paint applied. Even going super low in a continuous stroke passing on top of the same surface, the color builds up. Whereas with paint intensity, the transparency will be a constant. Unless I activate a cumulative stroke inside the stroke settings. By the way, if you want to paint all the geometry with one color, you don't have to do it by hand. Simply use the button Force Paint All. 
Color is not the only thing we can paint. We can paint material properties which will affect how the light interacts with the surfaces. First we need to switch to PBR shading because Matcap cannot read this information. You'll see a preview of the color on material by using the sliders. Low roughness means smoother or polished surfaces that will have strong reflections. A high number means the surface scatters the light, we lose reflections and highlights decrease. Metalness will add metal qualities to the surface and the capacity to act as a mirror. This mirror quality will be affected by the roughness. Oversimplifying, it's how conductive a material is. Gold is highly conductive, so the number will go really high. Aluminium is conductive, but not as much. Clay is only a tiny bit conductive, and rubber is not at all. If you like a material you created, you can save it on the material library. Or if you want to pick a color and material in your model, use the eyedropper tool or simply do a long hold in the screen and drag. Alright, we will paint something together in a follow-up video. For now, happy sculpting and painting! That's it for this tutorial. If you find it useful, make sure that you leave a like so other people can find it. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe as we are bringing out CG and illustration tutorials every week. Become a patron and access tutorial assets, bonus content, a private discord and more by clicking in the link below.